Welcome to Podell Screencasts. Here's another installment. Let's hit it. Today, we are going to be talking about economics, a subject that mystifies students often because they think it's all about money, uh, but that's really a misperception. When we're talking about economics, we're actually talking about how we allocate, as a society, scarce resources that have alternative uses. So that's what economics is, the allocation of scarce resources with alternative uses. So that begs the question, well, what, what do we actually mean by that? So we're going to analyze that definition today, and then we're going to compare different systems of allocating those resources that we call economic systems. Now, in analyzing the definition, allocation is the first term, and we'll get back to that. But the term I really want to get into first is scarcity. By scarcity, we don't mean that we're all going to not have enough to survive. Uh, in economics, what scarcity means is that there isn't enough stuff to satisfy everyone's wants. And so, because there isn't enough stuff to satisfy everyone's limitless wants in a society, we have to choose who gets what. We have to decide how things are allocated. So scarcity is an underlying principle. When we're talking about the allocation of scarce resources with alternative uses, what we mean is that that's the incentive to economize, the fact that resources are ultimately scarce when compared to our limitless wants. Now, as far as resources and what we're allocating, we're really talking about two kinds of things, uh, outputs and inputs uh, in the economy. And the outputs we refer to as goods and services. In short, things we want, physical things we call goods, uh, and things we want done for us are things that we call services. The other things that are allocated in the economy are what we call inputs, the stuff that we use to make the stuff and services that we end up buying or consuming. Uh, they are land, labor, capital, and enterprise. By land, we mean natural resources. By labor, we mean human effort. By capital, we mean the goods that are used in order to build the things that we are going to produce the goods or the services. Uh, this can also mean money uh, that's used for that purpose. And then enterprise. Entrepreneurs in society are individuals that take risk in order to produce goods and services. So if we accept that these inputs and outputs are scarce and thus cannot satisfy our limitless desires, the question becomes, how do we allocate these goods and services? How do we economize? The thing in our societies that determines how we economize, how we choose to allocate, is called the rationing function. The rationing function. Uh, and sometimes this is government, sometimes this is something else, sometimes this is a kind of government. So we're going to get into that uh, next. So we're transitioning now into comparative government. The first system for rationing goods and services that we're going to explore is called capitalism. And by capitalism we mean a system where price is the rationing function. Can you afford it and are you willing to pay for it? That's how we determine who gets what in capitalistic societies or systems. It's characterized by private ownership of goods and services. So individuals own outputs and inputs, and in turn are responsible for engaging in transactions that they perceive to be mutually beneficial in order to engage in commerce. Now because of this private ownership and price being the rationing function, critics of capitalism point to it as an unfair system in terms of its allocation of resources because there's inequality in outcome, whereas advocates for a capitalist system would point to the fact that it's a system that because government is not rationing these resources, it's absent coercion. So they would point to the process as being fair. The second system that we're going to discuss for allocating scarce resources with alternative uses is called socialism. And by socialism, 
we mean that voting or the democratic process through government is responsible for allocating the resources. So people vote to determine who gets what and how much of what. A classic example that we see uh, even today are communal farms in Israel called kibbutzim or, or kibbutz, uh, where people vote on what crops are produced and what gets built and uh, what gets sold and for how much. Proponents of socialist systems tend to point to a fairness in process through the democratic process, as well as fairness in outcome as reasons why society should adopt a socialist system uh, where the vote is used to allocate resources, the rationing function. Opponents tend to point to the fact that there's no private property in socialism and that there's a bit of what's called a free rider problem where overall production is inhibited because people don't look at there being a greater reward marginally for producing more goods and services. The natural self-interest that capitalism uh, uses in order to enhance production through what's called the profit incentive for people trying to make more for themselves is eliminated in socialist systems. The last system that we'll explore together in this video is state communism, which essentially has a rationing function of a dictatorial government that owns and controls and centrally plans everything for the best interest of the people that they are charged with serving. Proponents of a system of state communism often will advocate for the system because of its greater ability to pivot and make quicker decisions that are coordinated than either capitalist or socialist systems. They'll also point to uh, fairness and outcome like socialists will uh, in terms of discussing the fact that uh, all end up with an equal share. Opponents of the system will tend to point to, uh, like socialism, uh, a lack of individual initiative and innovation, lower overall production levels, uh, and the fact that a dictatorial government is determining uh, people's fate often implies uh, that there are greater amounts of state control necessary through a police state to make sure that people are producing what the central planners want. This was meant to be a very basic primer on economic concepts and systems. Very grateful that you chose to watch.